Well, it looks like this week we have a question about your book. Awesome. It looks like it looks like Ben didn't read it. Read it too closely <laughs> <laughs> because he's asking, "What is the Eddie Haskell ploy, and why should I use it?" But I presume you wrote about it in your book. Thank you for arguing. As you know. As I know, <laughs> yeah, I've read, you read it. it. <laughs> okay. Obviously, it's great. Couldn't put it down. Um, so the Eddie Haskell ploy is named after, and this is my I named it this, mm -hmm. because there wasn't any Greek word for this. Um, but it's a really great technique. It's named, I named it after this guy from the TV show, Leave it to Beaver. Oh, little, I've heard of that show. before your time, a like, little. like a century or so. But the, um, Eddie Haskell was the suck up. He was, he was always saying to Mrs. Cleaver, how pretty she looked. Gee, Mrs. Cleaver, your hair looks nice. Thank you, Eddie. Where are your rubbers? This technique basically is where, if you're gonna lose an argument, if you just know you're not going to win, your fallback position can be actually to enthusiastically endorse the other side, which you don't really? want. In order to build a strong relationship or to earn points for later on, uh, in politics it's used all the time. Yeah. Uh, people uh, think Obamacare was invented by Obama when really what Obama was doing was actually supporting a healthcare policy he had opposed and Republicans had originally thought of in the first place. He wanted the government to pay for all the health care. Instead, he went over to the Republican side and endorsed it so enthusiastically that people actually thought it came from him. That's the Eddie Haskell ploy. You can debate whether that actually worked for him politically, but um, that's, so that's what he's doing. Okay, so how do you apply it personally? Um, the Eddie Haskell ploy, I, my daughter was a master of this when mm -hmm. she was a kid. At one point, I remember when she uh, wanted to go to a party, she'd been invited, mm -hmm. but she knew that we would check to see if parents would be there uh -huh. and whether this is really legit. She knew she'd get busted, that we, there's no way we'd let her to this particular mm -hmm. party. So she said, instead, she used the Eddie Haskell ploy. She said, you know, I've been invited to this party. And before we could ask questions about it, she said, but I'm not going, the parents won't be there and I've heard there might be alcohol. She knew that she, was, she wasn't gonna get to go anyway, so why not earn points for next time around when she wants something, like to borrow the car or to go out on a date with somebody we didn't particularly like. I could have learned a thing or two from her. I'll tell you, she was a master. Eddie Haskell ploy. <laughs> my parents always saw right through me, but normally my tactic was, oh mom, you're so pretty. She said, yeah, what do you want? Yeah, well, even so, sometimes, even when people see through your ruse, your tools of rhetoric, um, just the fact that you're making that attempt to engage with them, uh, the, the right kind of parent, and maybe you don't have one. I was totally the right kind yes, of parent. Yes, I do, Would Mom. It, <laughs> some parents appreciate that, that you know, that, like that engagement. Yeah. So uh, try it. Let me know in the comments below, I'm below. being on this one, um, how the Eddie Haskell ploy works for you. And keep in touch. No, this is an argument. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It's just contradiction. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. It is not.